and welcome back to another Craig and Dave Unscripted. Um, so we're taking some time out this week to do something a, a little different. Um, we've mentioned it before, but obviously being a supplier of resources to schools, um, we do get a lot of uh, contact from students. We, we get the silly things I mentioned before. I think the number of birthdays and weddings we've been invited to, and it's like, no, we're not attending your 18th birthday party. It's not appropriate. But we also get a lot of really, we get a lot of really lovely you know, communications and praise um, from teachers and students, um, you know, just really just just thanking us for, you know, what we've done and our channel and helping them out. Um, but you had a particularly surprising, let's say, and, and, and pleasant personal experience this week, didn't you, Dave, which just, I think, highlights, you know, why, why, why we do this. I mean, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. I mean, yes, obviously we, we need to make an income and, and that's nice, but it's not just about the money. I think people who think uh, Dave and I are rolling about in mansions with cars and outdoor heated pools. Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's, it is not true. So of course, yes, we do need to make uh, a living, but you know, I think what happened to you this week and I will hand over, um, it just really goes to show one of the main reasons we, we, we do this. Yeah, that's it, Craig. So it was last week, um, actually, and uh, I went to Pate's Grammar School uh, in Cheltenham, which is an outstanding school and, um, you know, really is a, a great place to learn um, and a great place to teach at as well, I should imagine. But I, I went there to see a teacher to of computer science to, to try and sort of organize something um, in the local area for um, our local teachers. And uh, I walked into the school and I was presented with about a dozen students uh, who were there to meet the famous or infamous or <laughs> God knows what, uh, Dave from Craig and Dave. And um, you know, I was quite touched, um, and they presented me what? with a thank you card. And I, <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I was completely overwhelmed. I was a bit speechless. So they were there, and I was there, and I was like, "Hello, folks!" And I was a bit, I was literally a bit sort of like, "Is this, you know, is this GCSE um, A level? What frog in the throat?" Because I didn't, I didn't know what to say. I was kind of instantly overwhelmed. But yes, yeah, so it was the uh, year 12 students doing A-level computer science. But then they were sort of quickly um, um, joined by some year 13s and then some year 11s, I think, and possibly some year 10s. I'm not sure, but <laughs> there was a continual stream of students that Are you telling uh, me you were mobbed to by hello. fans? <laughs> mobbed by fans when you went to the school. <laughs> It was a bit like that. So I went there with a particular agenda, a particular mindset, something I wanted to achieve. Uh, and I was just completely derailed instantly. And I was sort of a bit emotional about it as I walked in and they were like, hey, Aww. thank you, Dave, from Craig and Dave. And anyway, so I thought for this episode, I said to them, look, because I can't just let this go. This is, I'm really touched. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll uh, I'll mention it to Craig, and and on Monday we'll record an unscripted and just say thank you to the students at Pate's Grammar School in Cheltenham. I'm sure Craig would like to do that. So uh, so that, that's say, what we're doing. So you I say thank I'll you. Just... Sorry, you say thank you, Dave. The card is written to <laughs> Craig and Dave. Yeah. It's... <laughs> no, no, this is thank you, Dave. <laughs> no, show I me don't know the... what you do, Craig. This is nothing to do with you, mate. This is show me the inside of that card. That doesn't say just thank you, Dave. Is it written just to you? <laughs> oh, it's all Dave. It's all Dave. That's what. <laughs> End of the video saying. right now. <laughs> you anyway, set me so, up. So I don't know how well my camera's going to pick all this up. To be honest with you, but so we've got some. Uh, we've you got got, yeah, some I'm comments. going back a second to the middle bit. Did it is just to you. Yay! Well done, Dave. Well, this is not. This is this isn't a valid. <laughs> you you weren't out at school, were you? I was. Anyway, anyway. So we got loads of comments on the card. I'm, I won't read them all because um, we've got quite a few on there. And uh, but I will. I'll I'll just pick out four. Okay, and I'm picking four out fairly arbitrarily. To be perfectly honest with you, so 
please don't be offended um, if if you wrote a, a comment and I'm not going to read it out. It, it's simply so we're not reading the same thing again and again and again. But I'm I'm truly touched, um, and Craig will be too when when oh, I, I read my joking him, aside uh, yeah. for for all the comments that we that we've received. So. Uh, yeah, so shall I? Uh, shall I just kick off and read? Uh, read, a, read yeah, a go on. Time? Okay, so the the first one says, um, "Thank you so much for all your help with computing. Craig and Dave is my go to computing revision resource now." And I, you that's know, lovely. the reason that sort of touched me is because I thought we are achieving what we set out to achieve. So when we thought about smart revise, we thought about what is the best way to prepare students for exams? And we knew that there were three key problems. One was the forgetting curve, this idea that you forget things over time, so you need to keep re-rehearsing things throughout the course, not just at the end, to beat the forgetting curve. We knew that subject-specific terminology and having a confidence and a competence with subject-specific terminology is really important. And although flashcards you know, are the go-to for that, we wanted to make them more interactive and more purposeful and more useful and base them on a known established pedagogy like the Litmus system and things like that. Yeah. And we also know from research that the most effective thing that you can do to prepare for exams is actually just do plenty of past paper questions again and again and again, and the same questions again and again and again, so that you can refine your answers, but also commit them to longer term memory. But of course, the problem with past paper questions is those questions have already been asked and yeah. they're not going to get asked in exactly the same way again. And you're going to quickly run out of material um, because, for example, with J277 with the GCSE, this is the first year it's going to be examined. So there's only yeah. a sample paper. There aren't very many questions. And of course, you can take the questions from the previous specification, the J276. But you have to be careful because they're not all relevant because the specification has changed, Changes. of course. Yeah. And there are new questions that will come in and older questions that you no longer need to revise. So we thought really, really carefully about trying to build Smart Revise so that it really does address the needs of the students. And I, and I just, you know, I'm so touched when students say to us you're now my go-to revision resource because that's exactly what we set out to achieve we want everyone to do yeah. better in exams and and, you know, uh, and that's why smart revise exists oh, originally for our own students to be fair we yeah. wrote it for our own students to do better in their exams but of course it quickly became apparent that other students would find this really valuable too and that, that puts us in a really difficult position actually craig um <laughs> in the sense that if our students do well, then it means they don't need to hit such higher grade boundaries to get the top grades, providing everyone else's students don't do as well as ours. So there's <laughs> politics there with how the whole system works. Of course, now what's happening is thousands and thousands, literally tens of thousands of students are now using Smart Revise, which is raising the bar, which means that our students now need to use the system just to keep up not to get ahead. So that's that's an interesting way of looking at it. It is, isn't it? Because a lot of people don't realise that those grade boundaries shift every year so that um, we have what are called comparable outcomes. Employees don't understand. They want to know that if you've got an A star and you're, you know, that means something. And they, and, and they don't necessarily notice, oh, but that was from a student in the 2019 vintage. That was a particularly good vintage that year. You know, that, it doesn't work. So they have these comparable grades and those boundaries shift every year. If you have a year where everyone in the country does exceptionally well, that doesn't mean everyone in the country gets an A star. Hmm. The same portion of people, roughly speaking, get an A star, A beat. The bar just goes up. So, I mean, you're right. You know, uh, we are shifting that bar. But. Is that a bad thing? No, no, it's not. You know, at the end of the day, it's about students learning and getting a passion for the subject. And if they're all doing better and they're all learning more and that bar is shifting up because of that, then that can only be a good thing. Yes, it makes it harder for everyone that's not using smart advice. <laughs> Go buy it now. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it, it is a nice feeling. And you said this to me before, Dave, and I'm sure if I had don't mention this, you were going to. We're able to have an impact on students far beyond what we were able to do when we were full time teachers in our own schools. And if you think about the reason most teachers go into the profession, 
if we throw out the the jokey answers, you know, 12 weeks holiday and, you know, finishing at 3.15, any teacher knows it's not quite like that. But if we throw out the jokey reasons, the, the reason most of us get into teaching is because, you know, we want to teach young people. We enjoy that. We want them to do well. And it's lovely when students return year after year, pop in. Do you remember me, sir? Oh, hello. You know, Tom, what are you doing now? I'm here. I need blah, blah. So you think, God, I taught that person computer science and they've got a degree. And But the most people you could affect at a school were the classes that you taught. I mean, even in a large comprehensive, we're talking, what, a thousand students and you're unlikely to have regular daily contact with all of those. We're able to have an impact now. And we do. We see it. We This is a great example. And we get these sort of emails all the time. We're able to have a, a positive impact on students far beyond what we were ever able to do. And that really genuinely is heartwarming when we get those sort of communications. It really is. I know that doesn't pay the bills, but it's just as nice. <laughs> it's really nice. Sorry, I've gone off on a little tangent, but it, it is lovely. No, not at all. I completely agree. And in fact, let, let me read another one of these out to you because it kind of reinforces what you've just said. So here we go. Thank you for all the resources and support you provided us. It's really lovely that we all know we have someone outside of school willing to help us and wanting us to do well. Smart Revise is an amazing help. And because of it, I feel way more confident in the things I can do now. Once again, thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. Now, the wow. truth is you probably could, to yeah, be fair. You could. But, <laughs> you could. but Craig's right. I think I completely underestimated the the impact this would have on me personally as a teacher because as you say I do my best yeah. for the students that are in front of me in my own classroom but you know at a level that might be between sort of you know five and twenty people in any one cohort coming yeah. through each year and then I might have a GCSE class as well which might have 30 students in it um, so I'm, I'm impacting as best I can for the life chances of those students and the enjoyment of the subject on those students. But what we, what I certainly didn't really appreciate when we started putting the videos together um, on YouTube, and they're not supposed to have loads of production value. They're supposed to just teach you the content that you need to know for exams. That's their purpose. And then Smart Advisors, we've already said, is the tool to help you with revision. And I, I didn't... I just completely underestimated the impact that would have on learners outside of my own classroom. And mm -hmm. for me, that is really, really special to know that there are students out there that I will, some of them I will never meet. And these students at Pates Grammar School, I met for the first time last week and I'll probably meet them again when I pop into Pates again, wow. but maybe only once or twice. And there are students out there up and down the country who we will never meet yet we've managed to help them with either their enjoyment of the subject or their exam performance or, or getting through a difficult stage because either they find it very, very difficult or perhaps their teacher, because they're a non-specialist, doesn't have the same confidence that we've got. And we're able to help those teachers and those students in schools that we will never visit. And for yeah. me, that is that's really special. I think that's one of the, the most valuable things you can do as a human being, actually, is to help somebody else. You, and to help a stranger yeah. is another level, isn't it? And, and yeah. that's why I do this job. Yeah, we do. You're making me remember past things now. This is a a motive trip down memory lane <laughs> but we've had a, a number of students not not a huge number but we've had a number of students since we've started this that have reached out and said they've had a real passion for the subject a real desire to do it but it's just not offered in their school um or you know or, or, or the teachers left in year 12 and unfortunately they've got you know, a, a cover teacher who's doing the best job they can but it's not the same and i i, I know we have given out um, sometimes free subscriptions I remember to, to, to help them and I can't, can you remember the name of the it was a it was a girl wasn't it and sure it's a lovely letter she taught the subject to herself totally herself for her resources went on to uni and it, she, she wouldn't have been able to do that without what we gave her do you remember that one yeah that that was Olivia Bryant That's and, and I don't think yeah. I will ever forget that name because Olivia yeah. is someone That's we've it. never met we don't know what she looks like um, but she just emailed us out of the blue 
to say um, I wasn't that interested in computer science. I definitely wasn't going to go and study it further. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but I picked up, you know, your resources, your videos, and I learned the subject matter through that. And, and having done that, I picked up an interest in the subject. And Olivia, we, I mean, we haven't heard from Olivia now for years. Um, it was just one email out of the blue that we got. So I'm not sure what Olivia's up to now. But Olivia went on to study computer science at university because of our videos and, uh, and, and developed that love of the subject as a result of that. And I think that that was, that was a yeah. turning point for me when I realized that actually this was a thing. This was a thing. And I can't really describe that. But, you know, we were teaching in our own schools and that was, that was satisfying yeah. um, enough. You know, we didn't have ambitions to really change the world in, in that sense. But we wanted to develop more things um, for, for our colleagues. We needed more time to develop some good stuff. And so our ambition became to go part time. It wasn't what we set out to do initially. Um, but of course, financially, you can't just go part time. I've got a family and it's yeah. you know, got people to support and dependents. Um, but we managed to scrape enough together by selling some of our resources to our sort of early adopters. Yeah, it gave us enough, enough financial backing to then go part time. And of course, once you go part time, you can then invest That's more time cool. in what you're doing and produce better stuff. And that, that's what we did. And as a result of that, you know, the turning point for me now is that this really is about trying to support students up and mm. down the country that, that we're never going to meet. And that, that makes me feel yeah. really special. But I want to thank the students out there um, for that, because you say that you can't do it without us, but we can't do what we're doing without you. Yeah. Uh, it's a two way street. And, and so, you know, thank you. Yeah, it is lovely because you say we get these emails quite often and ignoring the little the silly jokey emails, we do try and respond to the genuine thanks, even if sometimes it's only a line or two. And I apologize if we haven't all the time. And um, the reason it's really nice is it's it's not just about stroking our ego. It's it, it, it's not. It's because on a day to day basis, you get lost in the minutiae of doing your job. And for us, that's producing resources, working with other people to get new content for you, QAing this, having a meeting meeting about finances or our annual accounts what's this bug in smart advice and how will you fix it and it, it, you get bogged down and you do forget and then you know you've got we've got our our ticket system here at Craig and Dave where you know customers query their invoices and send us issues and in amongst there those little emails remind you it's like you just get that thanks out of nowhere from a student just finished mm -hmm. my GCSE absolutely loved it thank you guys couldn't have done it without you and it, you said it, it, it's those sort of things that you step back and go oh this might not have been the most uh, fun day I've just had and I was stressed but actually wow look at that we just helped some kid get through his GCSEs and he's appreciative enough that he sent us a personal email um, so, you know, it, it is right. Go on. I'm, I'm getting, yeah. Yeah. And, Give me and, another one. <laughs> as you said, we do get a few silly ones as well. And yeah. we don't mind a few silly ones, you know, as long as they're not clogging up our inbox. We don't we don't mind a few silly ones because that that's part of working with young people. And when, yeah. you know, I'm sure I speak for you as well here, Craig, when I say when you go into teaching, you go in with your eyes wide open and you know that you're teaching adolescents and, you know, you see the world in a different way to the way way we do you know yeah. you're young and fun and I'm <laughs> old and bold and and that's the kind of <laughs> that's the way it is I'm still um, fun you know so we <laughs> it, that's all part of it you know I, I love all the sort of yeah. jolly japes that happen in school and the the things that young people get up to it's for me that's all it's all part of the fun and it's all part of like enjoying life and learning what life's yeah. got to offer and making mistakes and picking yourself back up again and moving forward and you know, we've all been young and we've all done these things. And uh, so we don't mind. Yeah, let me read you another one. So yeah. I think this one again follows on from what you were saying, actually, Craig. So um, as I didn't study computer science at GCSE, I found myself behind my peers in A-level studies. Yeah. But your YouTube videos, as well as Smart Revised, helped me to catch up. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, again, you know, you don't need to have studied GCSE to do A-level, but there will be a lot of concepts that 
your friends will be more confident with because they've spent two years immersing yeah. themselves in the terminology of the subject. So, of course, they're going to look and feel more confident with some of the basic concepts. But that doesn't have to disadvantage you. And every year we teach students that have not done the GCSE. And, and I will be honest, I, I always yeah. think to myself, oh, my goodness, there's a lot to catch up on here. But by the time they get to the end of year 13, those that are dedicated, you don't actually, you can't actually tell the difference between those yeah. that have done the GCSE and those that haven't. And I know from personal experience, I've taught loads of students that have not done the GCSE and they've come out with top grades beating some of the students that had done two years of GCSE. Exactly. I'd rather take a student at A-level who hasn't done the GCSE but has a passion and interest, enthusiasm and eagerness to learn than someone who's done the GCSE but is not really bothered because the first person will do better so when you get a little message like that you know i was potentially worried especially for those who don't know pates it's uh, not just a grammar school it's an incredibly highly performing grammar school so i can imagine that particular student that wrote that comment if he'd um if he'd come in surrounded by other students at pates that had done the gcse the pressure there uh so that message has an extra bit of waiting it's like yeah i felt fully supported up to speed you know felt confident because um mm -hmm. grammar schools can be a pressurized environment to students mm -hmm. they often feel an added pressure to perform amongst their peers so that's lovely yeah yeah you you genuinely can achieve what you set out Absolutely. to achieve yeah within the boundaries of what is humanly possible right and yeah. and I did have a student one year. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying I advocate this at all, but it did happen. I had a student that at the end of year 12 had decided they'd made horrible choices with their A-levels. What they thought they were interested in when they were in year 10 and 11, they're now definitely yeah. not interested in. And they've been tinkering about a little bit with computers and wanted to do computer science and came to see me and said, look, I know it's the end of year 12, and I know we've got less than a year to go, but can I pick up A-level computer science? I said, sure, you can join my year 12 class next year if you want to sort of drop a year and come back. That's okay. Um, they said, no, no, no. What I mean is I want to come into your year 13 class from September and I said, Ooh, that's that, uh, you've missed half of the course. This is really tricky. Um, I wasn't overly happy about it. And then I got some pressure applied to me from a senior leader to say, <laughs> look, they're going to work hard. I would like you to give them an opportunity. And I was like, well, as long as you realize when they don't do very well, I don't want you holding me to account for their result because this isn't fair. So they were covering your back. I guess this has a nice, nice mm. ending, this story. <laughs> well, of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. And, <laughs> and so, the, you know, the student did come in. And they did, they taught themselves programming over the summer holiday. They picked up wow. all our tutorials yeah. for programming. They worked through them independently by themselves, got into that problem solving mentality which they'd already sort of picked up prior to deciding they wanted to change subjects and was able to hit the ground running in September and had gone a stage further and had watched some of the videos, picked up some of the content from year 12 and, and actually, within a few weeks, I couldn't really tell that they hadn't done year 12 because, of course, one of the problems in my teaching back in the day before we had Smart Advice is that the students in year 12, when they got to year 13 after the summer holiday, would have forgotten a lot of the stuff we learned in year 12 anyway. Yeah. And so when this new student hit the ground running, they were actually able to answer some questions that they'd never been taught and the year 12s in the same class couldn't answer and they had been taught <laughs> and it, it, it turned out in the end just through pure perseverance dedication and wanting to make it happen that that student actually got the top grade and and it does make you think wow if that's show. possible yeah. then you know that is possible for everyone really and it's about dedication it's it's about how Commitment. much are you prepared to work for your yeah. grade that, that's what it comes down to and yeah. I'm, I, I'm yet to teach a student that hasn't had the dedication and perseverance and hasn't got the top grade because for me that's the differentiator it's not the subject knowledge and, no. and everything else it's about the dedication and the perseverance and those students that that put the time in are the ones that get the results out even if they don't think of themselves as being particularly academic it's about hard work putting the graft in um yeah. 
And I know I frequently talk about, for example, marathon runners and people that play musical instruments, but I just think it's so true that, you know, you can run a marathon, but you can't just turn up at the start line and expect it to happen. You've got yeah. to put months and months of preparation in, you know, gradually increasing the number of miles that you're running until you get to a point where you know what it's going to be like to run that marathon. And then, you know, you, 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 you run it, but you get to sort of, you know, the brick wall at whatever mile yeah. that is. And you have to push yourself through it rather than giving up. And of course, that's what people do. And the same for people that learn musical instruments. I've got a lot of admiration. I don't play an instrument myself, and I kind of regret that. I've got a lot of admiration for people that learn and play musical instruments because I know, even though I haven't done it myself, I know what's involved. It's years and years and years of practice, and it's years and years of playing that instrument pretty poorly where you know people will be polite and they'll clap you and say well done that's great and they're secretly thinking that was awful um but you <laughs> yeah. don't care you're out there to to try your best to keep going to keep going to keep going and when you do that's when you become you know an expert at playing that instrument so it takes years to do it that old and adage isn't it you know it takes ten thousand hours to become a master in something well ten thousand hours of doing any particular thing doesn't happen without a lot of dedication and commitment and perseverance um and 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 and, and that is that is it we've had it before um just before you move on to your in the last comment uh We've had it before with guest speakers, especially when we had our, our technical director, Mark, on what, what are you after when you interview graduates from university? Is it the guy with the first degree with honours and the best A-level results? And it's like, nope, nope. Mm. And I can't remember how he phrased it in a, in a beautiful little way, but essentially it was it is exactly what we've been discussing. No, I'm after someone with communication skills, team building skills, a sense of perseverance and dedication, a will to push through and not give up, to look at a problem from a different angle when they're stuck. It was he, he called it something, but it's exactly what we've been talking about. That is what gets you through 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 life, uh, really. God, I feel like life coaches today. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you had one is, more problem solving yeah. isn't it it's about yeah. problem solving and not giving up and yeah. knowing that it's just a problem to be solved and if you keep at it and you're dedicated and you're passionate then you will get through it and uh oh how many times do i have to keep telling my year 12s and 13s it'll be worth it in the end you've just got to put the work in and they say oh yeah you know i'm busy i'm busy i haven't got time no you're not making time that's the truth of it yeah anyway anyway so let's go on to another one so that's a whole one. other video things i don't accept from students i can't <laughs> yes. do it we ought Find to do another stuff. one of those we did do one didn't we way back at the beginning yes. um yeah we should do uh we should do another one of those okay so here we go then last one so i was first introduced to you from the craig and dave youtube channel which really helped me at gcse the Smart Advice resource just makes so much sense as a central repository for computing revision. It's far better than anything I've tried before. Thank you so much. So there's a couple of things I want to kind of pick out oh, of that. Yeah. One is the YouTube channel. And the other is this um, lovely comment that says it's far better than anything I've, I've tried before. So just pick up on two, those two things. So. So our YouTube channel. Yeah, I know we keep talking about this, but, you know, it's. It's great for all students and for all teachers, particularly non-specialists. You know, there's a lot of government money at the moment, actually, in trying to support non-specialist teachers through the, um, you know, National Centre of Computing Education accelerator courses and all sorts of things. You know, there are courses left, right and centre at the moment to try and support teachers of computer science and particularly non-specialists. Yeah. And in fact, people that are running those courses at the moment, they're they have certain key performance indicators to hit at certain times. And so yeah. they're desperate to get people to do those courses as well. So, you know, if you are a non-specialist out there and you're a bit concerned about your subject knowledge for teaching GCSE or A-level computer science, go and do some accelerator courses because that will make you feel much better. It's very well supported at the moment. But the bottom line is what you actually need to know to teach the GCSE and the A-level is in our videos. Now, it won't do all the programming and, you know, the time you need to spend in getting confident with programming. But in terms of the raw theory, 
you could literally just show the video at the front of the class and we will teach the class what they need to know. People are quite surprised. They write to us occasionally and say, do your video cover everything I need to know? And there's kind of this sort of, you know, assumption that that we've missed something out or they won't be good enough. But that's the differentiator between us and say, you know, computer file and, and, and other um, channels out there. Those channels are amazing. And I watch those videos yeah. myself as well because they are amazing. But they're not doing what we're doing and they're not attempting to either. Yeah. Um, you know, what our videos do is they hone in with a pin sharp focus on exams and life needs to be more than about exams. So if you're interested in the background of computer science and everything else, then go and watch Computer File. Absolutely right. But yeah. if you want to know, well, what is it that I actually need to know for my exam, then you should be watching a Craig and Dave video. So, um, yeah, it, there genuinely is everything that you need to know is included in those videos. So before I go on to the last I mean, bit, Craig, just, I don't know if just to underline it, every spec point in a given course has a video. You won't find one that doesn't. If anything, some spec points, if they're meaty, have two or three videos. So spec point per spec point. And we reference the spec point specification in the video description. So we really do map it. When you're watching that J277 playlist on YouTube and you're looking at the architecture of the CPU, it tells you what you're going to get in a J277 OCR GCSE exam, not an A-level AQA 7517 exam. Um, that's a different video. Mm. And, and they are completely free and they're completely advertisement free. And that's the other thing people say to us, oh, why don't you monetize your YouTube channel? Yeah. And the truth is, if we monetized our YouTube channel based on all our stats, we'd probably make £20,000 a year from the monetization of that channel. Yeah. Nice but that's boost. not what it's for and it's not yeah. what we want to be about. Um, we don't want to charge students for watching our videos and we don't want you being distracted. If your teacher has sent you there to watch one of our videos for a particular purpose to prepare for your lesson or consolidate your knowledge, you don't then want to get an advertisement about something. And particularly halfway through that video when you should be concentrating on the content. So uh, it, we quite deliberately don't monetize them. Um, it's not that we don't know how, and it's not that we don't understand what we could do with that. It's just that it's not our philosophy to do it. And so um, that's that's why we don't do that. So if they're completely free, go go use them, students and teachers. Yeah. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to just quickly finish on then, Craig, was this idea that um, Smart Revise is better than anything I've tried before. But what I want to sort of pull out of that is there's obviously a notion there that there are other products out there and that somehow Smart Revise is far better. Now, I don't want to sort of blow our own trumpet with this, but I just want to point out that we have had a couple of emails come in um, over the last few months that have said, oh, my students don't really like it. They prefer Seneca or they prefer something else i'm not you know i'm not singling out seneca yeah. i'm just using it as an example um and the point is this those other tools are great you know yeah. they're great we're not saying don't use those other tools what we're saying is every tool serves a purpose and what we've done with smart Revise is focus it particularly on the psychology of learning and what research says is the best revision techniques and that is yeah. quiz for the forgetting curve, the litmus system for flashcards, and pass paper questions again and again and again, or exam star questions again and again and again, which our advanced mode does. So we're not trying to teach you the content through Smart Revise. That's not no. its intention. And I think we've done something wrong, actually, if we recreate a tool like Seneca, because if we're going to do that, when why don't you use Seneca? There's yeah. no point us making a tool that does that. What we're about is taking the educational research and applying it into a product that is specifically written to help you with exams. It's not about learning the content. Um, now, does it mean in the future we won't think about that and think about, well, you know, part of preparing for exams is learning content and are there things that we could do with the product to, to make it better? 
But the key point I'm making here is we're not trying to emulate anything else that's out there. That's that's yeah. not our bag. That's not what we're trying to do. And for those teachers that say, well, my students prefer using Seneca or they don't like Smart Advice, well, you know, what I would say to that is I, I don't think my students particularly enjoy the work that I set them, <laughs> but I know it's good for them, right? So although they might moan about, oh, I don't want to make this SLR, oh, I don't want to do it. We know it's good for them. I don't want to make notes on the videos. We hear that all the time. Yeah. Well, I don't care what you want because I'm the teacher and I'm employed to get the best out of you. And I'm going to get the best out of you by you doing this. I'm afraid you have to do as you're told. And that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. Those teachers that email us and say, oh, my students don't really want to do it. Well, they don't have a choice, I'm afraid. I don't know yeah. why you're giving them so much leeway. Make them do it because it's good for them. Okay. Yeah. The one thing I'm on, I'm on a roll now, Craig. Sorry. <laughs> but the one thing that, that irritates me in my own classroom, and this happens every lesson, the students are like, Oh, smart revise quiz, smart revise quiz. And I keep going on at them about I want you to do smart revise a little bit every single day, even if it's just five questions every single day. You don't need to wait for the lesson to come around. But when the lesson does come around, we're going to spend five minutes or seven minutes at the beginning of the lesson just doing smart advice quiz questions because it's about reinforcing the things that you've already learned. And if I don't continue to do that, yeah. then I shouldn't be surprised that you forget things because smart advice quiz was built to address the forgetting curve. So if you're not using it like that, then don't be surprised if students forget. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, you, so my students don't want to do it either. That's that's the point I'm trying to make here. My students don't yeah. want to do it either, but it's good for them. And so that's how we get good results. <laughs> yes. Well, we've definitely we've definitely um, got gone off a little bit on a tangent, but some really interesting things we've spoken about there. It, it's it's true. We've gone back and touched on perseverance and you know why we write these tools and our ethos, but. Let's just return back to where we started at the very beginning, really, I guess, which was just, you know, it's that, yeah, Dave walked into a school and got a card with just his name on it. That's where we started today. Yeah. So to the people of Pakes, I also exist. Um, but, <laughs> but on a serious note. It's all I mean, Dave. You know, those people that write to us and say, I think Craig and Dave are the same person. You're right. It's all me. It's all Dave. Oh, no, the the... the... Popular internet message boards would say that I'm the real person, apparently, and you're the fake clone. But that argument is going to weigh on. But no, in all seriousness, we, we we do read them all. We try to respond. It does mean a lot to us. And thank you very much. It, and on a tough day, it certainly reminds Dave and I of one of the main reasons why, why, why we do this. So, you know. Feel free to carry on dropping us an email if you want to say thank you. Yeah. But again, we couldn't do this without you guys. Um, right. I think uh, any closing thoughts from you or are we done? Just thank you very much, Pates Grammar School. I was genuinely touched and, and I was kind of lost for words in the moment because I was wow. so overwhelmed um, <laughs> by your generosity. So thank you. Dave, lost for words. We'll end on that point. See everyone next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.